Boys and girls of every age, wouldn't you like to see something strange? Coming up next, we're talking about the Nightmare Before Christmas. Hey, comic enthusiasts and pop culture lovers, I'm Ashley. Sup, nerds, I'm Ryan. And together, we are... Couple, Couple of Nerds! Sup, nerds, it's spooky season! That's right. And we're going to be starting off with one of my favorites and the quintessential Halloween movie, The Nightmare Before Christmas. And it's cool because Ryan is wearing a Jack Skellington shirt. That's right. One of my favorite cool. shirts to wear when it's colder out. Mm -hmm. And did you know that it actually had two releases? Really? Yes. It first came out in 1993. Mm -hmm. I know that's when you were born. And then it had a re-release in 3D in 2006. Which okay. is really cool. I've seen the 3D version, it's really fun. I've never seen it in 3D, but I would love to. Oh, it's really cool. And the film actually took over three years to make because it was stop motion. Oh yeah, that takes a long time to do. Yeah, especially because one of the shots was really hard to get. It was actually the shot of Jack Skellington reaching for the doorknob for the Christmas land, and it's reflected back, but you don't see the camera. That was still done in stop motion. There's no CG, really. Like the only thing that's like art, like that's like artwork put on top is with the like, snowflakes falling down sometimes. And the fire. And the fire. Yeah. But it took that long to make. <laughs> it's crazy. So another cool fun fact. I know a whole bunch of fun facts about Nightmare Before Christmas. Um. So yes, it was basically done through Disney because Tim Burton actually came up with the idea as a poem when he was an animator for Disney. Oh, that's cool. Okay. Yeah. And so it took a while for it to actually get into production. Uh, Tim Burton didn't really direct it, did he? No, he was a producer. Oh, okay, right. Yeah, the director is actually, hold on, I have to remember his name, it's uh, Henry Selick, because that was his first actual movie. Okay. And so that's, it's his job, so that was him, all stop motion was him, but it was all under the, um, kind of the, the influence of Tim Burton. Yeah, it was his original idea and, and all that. And his drawings and everything. And kind of a fun fact for that, did you know that since Nightmare Before Christmas is a musical, the music was actually done before the script was. Really? Did the music first? Yes. That's pretty cool. Yeah, Tim Burton actually got in contact with Danny Elfman, because mm -hmm. Tim Burton also helped with the movie, um, well, with the first Batman movie. Yeah. And the second one, too. The best two Batman. Yes. <laughs> so he had kind of a contact with Danny Elfman already. So he contacted Danny Elfman. And so he made all the songs. In fact, Danny Elfman is actually the singing voice for Jack Skellington. Cool. And since the whole story was actually based on the poem, it was kind of, you know, derived off of the, the Night Before Christmas kind of stuff. But they only had three characters in the poem, and that would be Jack, his ghost dog Zero, and Santa. And it's, it will start with that. But yes. There's so many more characters in the, in the movie. There's Sally, there's all the monsters, the vampires. There's the Oogie Boogie. Yeah, yeah, I love Oogie Boogie. <laughs> and Zero is cool. He's like one of the most famous and iconic characters. This Zero, the little ghost dog. And what's really cool is Danny Elfman is the voice for, the singing voice for Jack Skellington. But he's also the singing voice for Beryl, which is one of the three trick-or-treaters, Lock, Shop, and Beryl. And uh, like, just one last thing, though, too. Did you know that Jack Skellington, the Pumpkin King, has had cameos in other stop-motion movies and other movies? But yeah, like, he actually showed up in James and the Giant Peach. And he was also in Beetlejuice. Um, let's see, he was also in Coraline and Princess and the Frog. Really? The live-action version of Alice in Wonderland and also in the live-action version of Sleepy Hollow. So all in all, I think you guys should go ahead and start kicking off the spooky season by watching The Nightmare Before Christmas.